In parts A, B, and C, we have to calculate how much work the gravitational force does as the roller coaster car moves from this initial point here to various points labeled A, B, and C. Now, in order to calculate the work done by the gravitational force, we're going to take advantage of the following idea. We learn in this chapter that for either rises or falls, the change delta U in gravitational potential energy is defined as being equal to the negative of the work done by the gravitational force. So in an equation form, that statement amounts to this equation right here. Now we could simplify this a little bit if we change the W to the work done by gravity. So we'll put a little subscript G there. We would divide both sides of this equation by negative one. So then we have negative of the change in gravitational potential energy will equal the work done by the gravitational force. We can continue simplifying by expanding this delta U. We know that delta would be a final value minus an initial value. And then for the final gravitational potential energy, we will have m times g times the final height minus, and then for the initial gravitational potential energy, it would be m times g times the initial height. We could even go further in simplifying this if we factored out an mg. So we would have negative, and then we factor out the mg, and then we simply have the final height minus the initial height. This expression will allow us to calculate the work done by gravity in the first three parts of the question. So let's take a look at the picture again. Now in part A, we are seeking to calculate the gravitational, excuse me, the work done by the gravitational potential energy from this initial point and then over here to point A. Now, the first thing you should notice is that at those two points, the heights are both h. So if we went to the equation that we defined above, we would have negative mg and then we would have h minus h. Now, of course, that would equal zero on the left-hand side. So the correct answer to part A is that the work done by the gravitational force is simply zero joules. Now, in part B, the roller coaster cart is moving from that initial point to point B right here. So in that case, the final height is H divided by two and the initial height is H. So this would be the expression that we could use to calculate the work done by gravity. We might simplify the inside of the parentheses. We can make a common denominator. So h over two minus two h over two, and then continuing to simplify in the parentheses, we would get negative h over two. Now, frankly, the two negatives are gonna cancel. So we have this negative times this negative. This leaves us with a final expression of mg times h over two. All we need to do is plug in the mass, the value of g, and then the value of h that was given in the question. And when we plug that into our calculator, we get 169,785. This is work, so it comes out in joules. This is the correct answer to part b of the question. Let's go look at part c and look at those heights in particular. So now we're going to move that final height to the sort of ground level, and that is where the height would be zero. So if we look at our setup, maybe we can copy and paste it. This setup right here, we'll drag it down for part C. And now the major difference here is that the final height, instead of being h divided by two, is just going to be zero as noted above. So now in the parentheses, we have negative h. And then when we simplify this, we are just going to get positive mg times h. This will be the work done by gravity for part C. Let's go ahead and plug in the known values. And this time we're going to get 339,570 joules. This is the correct answer to part C. Let's go ahead and look at the next parts. In those parts, we are told that the gravitational potential energy of the Earth car system is taken to be zero at point C. Then we need to calculate the value of the gravitational potential energy when the car is at points B and E. So to calculate gravitational potential energy, we're going to be utilizing this equation given in the chapter. And again, in part D, we're gonna be calculating that particularly at point B. Now remember, the ground level at point C is defined as a height of zero. And so when we look at the diagram, we can see that the height from point C up to point B is just simply that H divided by two. That's what you're gonna plug in for this height in the equation. So here we go. We could say that the gravitational potential energy is equal to the given mass, which is that 825, multiplied by g, and then multiplied by h divided by two, 
h was 42 meters. And when we compute this, we can see that the answer is again that 169,785 joules. So that is the answer to part D. We'll head over to part E. And in that part of the question, we're going to be calculating the gravitational potential energy at point A. You can see that the height above the ground level there is just H. So basically the same setup as in part D, but we're just going to be plugging in H. So then we pick up our calculator one more time, we punch this in, we're going to get that 339,570 joules. That is the gravitational potential energy at that point A in part E of this question. So now we just go back to the final part of the question, which asks us, if the mass were doubled, would that change the gravitational potential energy of the system? And if so, would it increase or decrease? Now, certainly, if we double the mass, we're going to be changing the gravitational potential energy because if we look at the equation for gravitational potential energy, we can see that gravitational potential energy, which is U, is proportional to the mass, M. So in other words, if we were to double the mass, M, then and, and not change G and not change the height, then that's going to double the gravitational potential energy. So our answers to parts D and E, for example, would all be doubled if we happen to double the mass. So the correct answer, certainly for part F, is that the gravitational potential energy would increase. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but of course, please don't feel obligated to do so.